Good evening, everyone. Waiting for the system to let me know we're going live. Thank you for being here. We are live. Welcome back to another Metabolic Monday. Today, we're going to talk about the power of protein prior to endurance exercise for enhancing fat loss during the exercise session and also helping to suppress appetite and food cravings in the post-exercise window. I'm very excited that you're here. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. You might be wondering about my voice. Mike, what's going on with your voice? I don't know. I lost my voice over the weekend. I was out hiking and camping and we were talking a lot and I'm not sick or anything like that. So my voice is a little scratchier than normal, but everything is just fine. We're going to dive into it. Very excited that you all are here today. Here's the paper that we, had, that we will be talking about today. Uh, the title of this uh, actually was a thesis paper by a uh, great gentleman over in the UK who is uh, comparing the effects of nutrient exercise interactions. And we're going to talk specifically about chapter six in his thesis paper that involved, I believe it was uh, 13 or 14 uh, subjects here, mixed gender subjects. So for those of you ladies that want to know if there's female subjects in this study, yes, we're going to talk about women. Uh, the title of this part of the thesis is a low carbohydrate, high protein lunch increases fat oxidation during evening exercise, while it's suppressing subsequent appetite and energy intake, which again, I thought is just quite fascinating. So, as always, what we like to do in these lives is dive into some content and then take your questions. So, as we get into it, so you might have some questions, I want to give you the background and the perspective, historically from the academic literature perspective, about what the evidence suggests about fasted versus fed exercise. And you need to know about this paper right here by Edinburgh et al. that was published a few years ago. What I can do is actually make this a little bit bigger so you all can see this. I know you're on mobile devices. Uh, that might be a little bit better for you. Okay. So, this study here uh, and many other related studies from this scientist caused a lot of people to speculate that fasted exercise must be superior for fat loss when it comes to comparing fed exercises versus fat, uh, fasted exercise. The title, just in case you're doing dishes or you're at the gym yourself right now, which would be even cooler, uh, the title of this paper is Skipping Breakfast Before Exercise Creates a More Negative 24-Hour Energy Balance, a Randomized Controlled Trial in Healthy, Physically Active Young Men. And that led to some mechanistic speculations about the power of fasted exercise, causing scientists to speculate on the cellular and molecular level, what is going on? What is metabolically different in the fasted state versus the fed state? And there could be uh, changes within the influx of fatty acids from the hormonal milieu that's created when you're fasted versus fed, i.e. the dearth or lack of insulin, which would cause you then to release more stored lipids from your fat cells that could be uh, transported into the mitochondria, which of course is why your cells generate energy during uh, aerobic exercise, and that could increase fat oxidation. Well, that is true, in fact, uh, per this study in a randomized clinical trial, uh, the scientists found several changes in fat oxidation and most importantly, 24-hour energy intake, uh, causing people to be in a more of an energy deficit, which over time could lead to fat loss, right? So that created a lot of fervor and excitement, but here's the thing that I think is not talked about enough, and that is that sometimes when people do fasted exercise, especially in the evening time, they can overconsume energy in the post-exercise meal, and that's exactly uh, what what there was some concern about, uh, and that's why scientists in this particular study wanted to compare the effects of uh, fed versus fasted exercise um, following a protein-containing meal to see if, well, Perhaps if people are consuming protein before exercise, they can still have a good workout uh, and also increase fat oxidation, but not be susceptible to the post-exercise indulgences that particularly men are sensitive to, women as well. It depends on the, uh, the deficit that that exercise creates. But sometimes when we exercise intensely, we feel like we need to reward ourselves with food in the post-exercise window, particularly when we engage in aerobic-based exercises. And I've seen this because I used to bike race and, and I did it this at an elite level. Sometimes people would gain weight as the season went on, which was really counterintuitive to me because the volume of exercise generally increased as did the intensity of exercise during at least the cycling season. That was my particular sport. People would train more, they would race more and all this. And some people get more and more fat as the season went on because they were rewarding themselves in the post-exercise window because they were consuming a lot of carbohydrates in the diet. 
You know, remember the old adage, you have to carb load, right? You had to have spaghetti before your run. If you did cross country in high school or you played football, right? You had to carb, carb load the night before. Well, it turns out that if you prioritize protein and if you have protein before exercise, you actually increase fat oxidation and are, don't increase the post-exercise uh, meals that you might be susceptible to uh, compared to fasted exercise, which I think is pretty powerful. So what these what this researcher did is they, they had three arms of the study. They had a fasted arm of the study. They had a high carbohydrate arm of the study, meaning before they exercised, they had a high carb meal, you know, over hundred grams or something. Then they had a low carb group and they had the group having protein specifically, a high protein, low carb, moderate fat meal. And here's what they found. As you can see here on the top part of this graph here, part A is the, of course, the fasted exercise group would oxidize more fatty acids during the exercise session. We suspect that, right? We've, we've long known that. But if you also look at the high, the high protein meal and comparing that to the fat oxidation during exercise, uh, these people still uh, had a sig significant uh, increase compared to the high carb meal in fat oxidation during exercise. Now, what you also see here is a shift in carbohydrate uh, consumption and, the, and all the like. But why is this important? Well, it turns out that when you do straight fasted exercise, it compromises your athletic performance. Now, it's not significant. It's about 3.6%. But if you're trying to split hairs, and for some of you, you're trying to get stronger, trying to get the progress and so forth. And it turns out that if you fast before you train, uh, it does compromise your exercise performance a little bit. Now, Again, it's it's marginal, but 3.6%. I mean, that might be the effect of uh, creatine or uh, branched-chain amino acids or some such. So uh, it's, it's important to recognize that there is a difference here, and that's why I want to get into the details of this uh, and talk about how, especially for people who are prone to over-consuming food after the exercise, instead of trying to do a fasted exercise, because we know that might compromise your 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 work output during the exercise session, have some protein. And the protein may be enough to help you have a better workout and burn the fat and so forth and possibly get you into an energy deficit and so on. But before we continue on, friends, again, if you're here live, hit that like button. Let me know what you think in the live chat section. I'll check that out in just a moment. I want to get to your questions. Any question is fair game during these Metabolic Mondays. You want to ask me about who's who I think might win the Super Bowl next year? Whatever. Just throw it in the chat. That's what it's that's what we're here for on Mondays. Also, my friends, I do, since we're talking about exercise, you know, I'm a huge fan of creatine. I'm a huge fan of real salt, electrolytes, magnesium, taurine. These are all ingredients that are synergistic and function to enhance the effects of, of all of the different ingredients. For example, creatine helps with cellular hydration. Electrolytes help enhance the absorption of creatine. That's why we have the novel creatine containing electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. There are now over 550 reviews. You can check it out over at myoscience.com. There's different flavors. We have different uh, delivery systems, whether it's a powder in a jug. Now we have the also the 30 serving containers and so forth. You can save with the code podcast at myoscience.com. Check out the reviews, see what other people are saying. Two different flavors. We have an unflavored coming. Again, podcast over at myoscience.com. So let's get into it. And we're going to talk about the study in more depth. But as always, I want to get your live questions. So I'm going to pop out the chat right now and we're going to dive into it. All right. Okay. We have Kyle says, add uh, quality grass fed protein shake into your routine. Can't argue with Kyle. I, I am uh, all about that. And since doing less fasted exercise in the last 18 months, I have put on about 10 pounds of muscle. No, no anabolic steroids, no SARMs, no whatever. I take DHA, I take bovine testicular extract. Those are the only sort of supplements with regards to hormones that I take. Uh, and it seems to be working well for myself and many others. And I have raw milk with grass-fed protein uh, pre-workout. Anyway, Kyle, love the, love the comment. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Chris says, my 18-hour fast and pre-workout drink is a cup of clean coffee, a scoop of prime beef protein, and one tablespoon of MCT oil. Seems to be working great for you. That's awesome. Love that. Walked four hours uh, fasted today. Wow. Four hours fasted. That's pretty impressive. Um, I like that. Okay. Um, Kimberly says, I ate a lot of carbs when I ran a lot. Yes. The dogma that is now outdated in the endurance athletic community is you have to have a bunch of carbs. 
Sadly, that is not always the case. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't carb cycle, but most people, their training intensity is low and slow zone two. And if you're doing low, slow zone two, you don't need a bunch of carbs, right? You can do that low carb. And then on race day, when you really want to perform, you can start to crank up the carbs and cycle the carbs. Okay, a few other comments and we're going to dive into it very, very soon. Okay, what about taking a map? What's a map? prior to working out a uh, master amino acid pattern. Oh, sure. You can take, um, you know, isolated amino acids. That's fine. I'm a bigger fan, honestly, of concentrated, uh, a whey protein concentrate because it has immunoglobulins. It's good for uh, the immune system, uh, lacto beta lactoglobulin, uh, lactoferrin and the whole thing. So that's just my, my bias. Uh, Kyle O'Neill says, Mike, what is your ideal ferritin level in men? Yeah, like around 150. 120, something like that. You know, you, I just, what in men, what I don't want to see is high ferritin over 300. You know, that's generally what I don't want to see. And so if, if that is you and you have a high hem, hematocrit, hemoglobin, uh, then consider donating blood, especially if you don't live at altitude or if you're on TRT. Okay. Rebecca says, I love the electrolyte sticks. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate that. Shannon just ordered some lemon lime, which is great. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, what do I think of NAD? Um, you know, I had a company send this to me. I, I've been experimenting with it. I mean, I haven't noticed anything to be totally honest with you. I think it sounds cool. I'm open to it. Um, the downside is it's super expensive. And, uh, I think there's a lot of things people should be doing. Iodine, zinc, magnesium, electrolytes, creatine. There's like six or seven things that are sort of like non-negotiables. And NAD isn't on that list for me personally, but I, my, I'm, I'm open to, to it. I just think it's expensive. Okay. I'm going to get you uh, more questions in a moment, but let's talk more about the study. All right. Okay, is it possible that consuming a low carbohydrate, high protein meal before exercise may mitigate some of the compensatory energy balance behaviors which occur in response to fasted based interventions? As I mentioned, when people do fasted exercise, they tend to overcompensate, overcompensate, Mike. They overcompensate for food in the post exercise window. They start to have the cookies, the ice cream, the pizza because they did a big workout. Now, if you have protein before you do your cardio, uh, as this study and other studies have found, it might have an appetite suppressant effect so that you're less susceptible to craving all the junk in the post-exercise window, which I think is great. Now, here's what's interesting. It seems that people who regularly exercise are more open to the idea of doing fasted exercise uh, as an intervention periodically. Uh, what this study found is 83.4% of those with prior exercise experience were willing and open to exercise fasted for its purported health benefits. In contrast, only 30% of subjects who, who, it turns out that these people don't exercise, were not open to the idea. And so that might hint that people who regularly exercise have more metabolic control. And, and that's why when people in, embark on all these lifestyle interventions that we've been talking about for the past almost decade here on this channel is, you know, you have to exercise, you have to compress your feeding window, you got to cut out the processed carbs, you got to focus on sleep, you know, all the things. So when you're doing all the things, it improves your metabolic health and you're less likely to be hangry and have all the mood swings and blood sugar swings. Okay, so prior knowledge you need to know about. Fasted morning exercise has been shown to increase fat oxidation, which may drive favorable adaptations in your muscle tissue and through the liver, leading to improved markers of metabolic health. Although all research on fasted exercise has been undertaken in the morning because of the overnight fast period and so forth, a convenient opportunity to achieve a fasted state without the need to skip meals is to do fasted evening exercise. And that's exactly what this researcher did in part of his thesis was have people fast you know, they had a, a protein containing lunch and then they fasted for six or eight hours, did the exercise and had a little bit of dinner. And it turns out that, that having protein, uh, and, and a, a moderate fast can, can be a happy medium, help you have a good workout, help you burn more fat during the exercise session, leading to those favorable adaptations that I just mentioned, and also make you less susceptible to craving a bunch of junk in the post-exercise window. Okay. Further information, appetite and energy intake responses to acute exercise are generally similar between males and females, although only a smaller number of studies have directly compared males and females. Fasted morning exercise increases fat oxidation, as I just mentioned, which may drive the adaptations, uh, but they say that 
uh, in this particular study that a low carbohydrate diet, high low carb, high protein lunch, increased fat oxidation during evening exercise compared to high carbohydrate, lower protein lunch. Although this increase was less uh, than that following the eight hour fast. Okay. So the total difference in fat oxidation was three grams. Um, and so I, I don't know, that's kind of interesting. Three grams of fat, you know, during a 15 minute exercise bout. That's more than I would have thought, but that's kind of interesting. So they say the low carb lunch may also suppress appetite and reduce ad libitum energy intake in the evening by some 313 calories compared to the high carb. Now that's important. So think about that. You know, if you are trying to lose weight and you're eating a, maybe it's a more plant-based diet, you're having beans and rice and grains and all this stuff, high carbs. And then you think that you're doing your body a favor by doing fasted exercise, but then that high carb meal causes you to overconsume energy in the post exercise window. So that's in, important. 313 calorie difference here. Think about that. You take two people that are fasting for the same length. You have one group eats a high carb lunch, another group eats a high protein lunch. The group that eats a high protein lunch consumes 313 less calories at dinner. That's pretty substantial. Uh, not only do they oxidize more fat during the workout, but they consume less food at dinner. So you do, it's not just one day. If you, if you do this five days a week, you know, you're talking about maybe 2000 calories, less food consumed over the course of a week. Multiply that over the month, over the year, you're talking about a lot less food intake and mostly the foods that people eat in the evening time, you know, can be cookies and crackers and ice cream and all the junk. So this is a good thing. So the scientists say these findings suggest that a low carb lunch could be used to achieve the same beneficial metabol metabolic responses to fasted exercise. Further studies are required to assess whether acutely reducing carbohydrate intake and increasing protein intake prior to exercise on a regular basis can be used to assist in weight and health management. But the evidence exists to show that chronic exercise performed in a fasted state may also enhance the adaptations that lead to favorable improvements in metabolic health. So the scientists do acknowledge that there might be some unique aspects of fasted exercise in terms of metabolism. But you know, the downside is, you know, in some people that can make them more susceptible to eat a bunch of foods later. All right. So the, the scientists say we examined evening exercise after a low carbohydrate, high protein lunch based on findings that carbohydrate consumption suppresses fat oxidation, but protein consumption may not. Consuming a low carbohydrate, high protein meal three hours before an evening cycling exercise increased fat oxidation compared to a high carbohydrate meal, but a lesser extent than an eight hour fast, which is obvious. And that's figured uh, here in uh, figure A that you can see on the screen. They say importantly, the low carbohydrate, high protein meal also suppress subjective and hormonal markers. These are gut hormones, uh, like semi-glutide, you know, this is the miracle weight loss drug that Hollywood celebrities are promoting. That increases one of the gut hormones, the incretin hormone known as GLP-1, as well as PYY. And it turns out that having protein and exercising, it increases the same hormones that this drug is trying to increase, but we know the drug has all these downsides. Okay, so that the low-carb, high-protein meal suppress subjective and hormone suppressed subjective meal intake and hunger cravings, but it also improved these gut hormones related to appetite and therefore reduced ad libitum energy expenditure in the evening compared to a high, carbo high carbohydrate meal and fasting, thus potentially offering an alternative method of increasing fat, ox fat oxidation while it's mitigating the challenges associated with fasted evening exercise. An alternative strategy to manage fasting-induced elevations in appetite without providing energy was examined. In this study, a very low energy, viscous placebo meal was reduced, uh, reduced subjective appetite compared to fasting, although this response was shorter lived. So another part of the studies, they gave people a very, very low calorie meal. Now this, I think I want to harp on because people think, well, if I have a little bit of a protein shake before my workout, I'm not going to get all the benefits. No, that is not true. Do what you need to do to have a good workout. I, I don't know how many times I can say this. It's really important. I see so many comments the people write in our chat and send great, well-intended people, but they're so worried about a little monk fruit or a little this. Look, having a little bit of food, if it helps you have a better workout, no problem with that. But what they did find is having a small little meal uh, helped the exercise session and actually had a suppression in appetite after exercise, which is important. So overall, the findings within this thesis suggest the metabolic benefits of overnight fasted morning exercise might be attained during fasted evening exercise. So 
If you can't do morning exercise, just don't eat anything between lunch and the time you exercise and you're still in a fasted state. But they say uh, challenges. Uh, uh, let me start over with this thing. I got all screwed up. The findings within this thesis suggest that the metabolic benefits of overnight fasted morning exercise might also be attained during fasted evening exercise. But challenges such as elevated appetite, reduced voluntary exercise performance, which is big, and reduced motivation to exercise and exercise enjoyment may preclude its success in the long term, which is why these scientists are saying, hey, look, if you have a small little protein containing meal, you might still have more energy to exercise uh, and enjoy the exercise more, which would make it a long-term habit, which is good, and so forth. Okay, a low-carbohydrate, high-protein meal and a very low-energy, viscous, placebo meal may be an alternative strategy. Did I say that? No. To offset the challenges associated with fasting, although longer-term studies are required. All right, now that we know all that, let's, uh, I want to just finish off with um, what we need to know in the long-term free living environments, there's been no evidence to suggest that there's any benefit long-term weight loss when people do fasted versus fed exercise. And that's been borne out by a lot of different studies. Although short-term mechanistically, it does appear that pure fasted exercise after six to eight hours of no food does enhance uh, messenger RNA molecules within the skeletal muscle and the liver that might improve metabolic health. But when it comes to Long-term weight management, there's really no difference in terms of fasted versus fed exercise. So the take home from this video is, if you are susceptible to consuming food after you exercise in the evening, try having a high protein, low carb lunch or a high protein, low carb snack before you work out. That is the, uh, that's the video, my friends, but that doesn't mean we're over because I want to get you live questions. Okay, let's see what y'all got. What do we have here? Uh, I, I might do this on my phone. Sometimes it's easier to see what is going on. Okay. What do we got? And again, thanks for being here, friends. Um, we are getting to the live chat here. So, Mr. Rodriguez says, Mike, do you know the difference between fat oxidation versus burning fat during and after exercise? Yeah, you know, this is a good point. Uh, this is what Lane Norton and Alan Aragon and a lot of people talk about. You know, um, looking at fat oxidation over the 24-hour period is important, but we also want to look over the weeks and months. And that's what, you know, I, I essentially concluded there is the long-term studies show no added weight loss effects from fasted versus fed exercise in terms of fat loss over the long haul. But short-term 24, 36 hour studies, we've reviewed many of these studies on this channel over the course, uh, the course of the last several years and do find short-term, there is elevations in fat oxidation in a 24 hour period. Uh, but does that translate over the course of months and years? Uh, the st studies don't really show that. So I think this is my super informal way to explain this and, and how I think about this is, you know, some days you should do a fasted exercise session. On Sundays, I usually do that. I go for a hike, we go for a walk, we go bike riding, and I don't feel the need to carb load for that. I just do it fasted. And as I, as I get going, I get warmed up, I start to eat food. Uh, and so that would be exercising in a low state. And as I mentioned, there are some cellular and molecular studies that show that exercising in a low state may improve messenger RNA products from your muscle and your liver that have health benefits, okay? Um, but you'd need to do it all the time. Probably not, okay. Um, uh, Shakti says, what's up, Mike? I notice when I would incorporate sprint, sprinting into my routine, I'd lose weight. Try the fast of working out for a few years. Yeah, doing... Doing periodic sprints, periodic high intensity intervals, whether it's on the Concept 2, the Ski Erg, can be beneficial. Absolutely. Okay. Brandon Young from the distant land of Northern California. I actually grew up in Northern California, so not too distant from me there, Brandon, but I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. JM says, what do you think of cancer as a metabolic disease? Well, if you read the work by Travis Christofferson, he has a lot of great books on that. Uh, obviously there's, um, Thomas Seyfried. There's a lot of people that have talked a lot about this really good evidence to suggest that, that metabolic, particularly of the colon, the pancreas, the lung is the liver. I can't remember if the liver, but, and the brain colon, lung, I believe breast, pancreas, brain, 
And I can't remember if liver is in there as well, but those are the cancers. And we've done many videos on cancers and metabolic disease. Uh, those are the, the tissue types where metabolic therapies appear to uh, improve clinical outcomes the best. Okay. Bone says, Mike, do you have any videos on optimizing gut health? I'm working on it because it's not that healthy and supplements are a waste of resources. Yeah, you know, the problem with most probiotic supplements is they just don't have the quantity of probiotic bacteria that you need. Um, you, you know, you want to get basically 500 billion CFUs, not a couple million like most of the Whole Foods brands recommend. So, um, yeah, gut health, I think it starts with your diet. You know, having fermented foods, um, chewing your food mindfully, eating in a, a circadian-aligned window. There's a lot with regards to gut health but that, that is beyond the scope of this talk, but start with fermented foods. I, I think that's huge. Best exercise is high-intensity interval training. Yes, Geo Neo 9 I agree with you. DH Long says, protein dinner with Mike, sardines, Ive Round, chicken breast, butter, and black coffee. Going to lift heavy weights afterwards. Uh, DH Long, I agree with all of that uh, outside the black coffee. I mean, I'm just... <laughs> Having caffeine afternoon is just a, is a, a no no for me, but but I love the I love the spirit. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, Kimberly says I make my husband intermittent fast for his liver, although he adds heavy cream to his coffee. Kimberly, that's fine. A little heavy cream, that's fine. No big deal. Baby steps, like you said, uh, Kimberly. Good job. Uh, keep it up. SDF says, do you have a cold? No, I lost my voice over the weekend. I went camping. I don't know if there's like an allergen or something like that out in the woods. I wasn't sneezing or anything, but my voice is scratchy. No cold. Feel great. I, I hiked uh, 14 miles uh, yesterday. So all is good. But thank you for your concern. Thoughts on CoQ10 in pre-workouts. Controversial topic with antioxidants. Yeah, so um, CoQ10 is going to be absorbed best with a fatty meal. There's no... To the best of my knowledge, there's no acute effects of CoQ10. Meaning, if you take CoQ10 pre-workout, you're going to notice more fat oxidation during your exercise session. Just get your CoQ10 levels up. It's lipid soluble. Start having it with dinner or your eggs in the morning. Uh, but just acute effects of CoQ10. CoQ10 is not creatine. Creatine is water soluble. Creatine electrolytes, you'll notice that pre-workout. CoQ10, probably not. But that doesn't mean it's not effective. You just you know, take it over time. Get your blood levels up just like you would vitamin D. Uh, Angelo says, just choose what makes you continue all those healthy habits. Consistency is key. Angelo, you are the man. I agree with you 107 million percent. Um, so yes, consistency is the key. Um, all right. The best way to get in contact with you, I'm a former consultant pharmacist and reverse to rare disease, eosinophilic esophagitis with food, no farmer looking to share my story. My email, uh, Jason is Mike at uh, high intensity health, but please don't send me a bunch of spam y'all. That's my email. Um, but yeah, we can connect uh, that way. That might be good. All right. So, uh, nebula in the sky says, sum up what you've talked about just came in. So the conclusion herein is having a high protein lunch and doing a fasted evening exercise session uh, increases fat oxidation nearly to the same extent as uh, having no food at all uh, for lunch, but it helps you consume less calories at dinner compared to a high carbohydrate lunch. And so it turns out that uh, having protein can, can help you increase fat oxidation to a similar extent as just doing fasted exercise, but it doesn't lead to the post-exercise indulgences and in consuming an excessive amount of calories. That's the, the elevator pitch here. So again, if you're susceptible to, to overindulging in food after you exercise, cut, yeah, cut, reduce your carbohydrates at lunch. And then if you exercise in the early evening, do your exercise training and have a higher protein lunch. And you might notice that you don't binge as much in the post-exercise window. Okay. Mike, do you think keto is still the best option or are we moving back to primal, including some fruits and sweet potatoes? Tiffy, I think like, a, honestly, my, my, uh, I love keto and I think there's a lot of benefits, but even a paleo diet is a basically almost a keto diet. So I think we are going, I mean, I, for a long time, I've been promoting, you know, uh, a paleo style diet. That's you know how I changed my health back in 2006, how I got into all this stuff and everything like that. So 
I do think there are benefits to fermented vegetables, to seasonally available fruits, honey, and these things. I mean, these are things that I've been consuming in my diet and promoting since 2006. Uh, you know, where I really got into this and, and went to Colorado State University and talked to Dr. Dr. Lauren Cordain and all that sort of stuff way back in the day. So yeah, I think there is something to that for sure. Absolutely. Which form of exercise is the best for depleting liver glycogen stores to start burning fat? Fasted exercise in the morning, HIIT training, weightlifting, cardio. That's gonna be the best. Okay, couple more comments here. Uh, Rebecca has a great question. She says, or he says, there is so much talk about reducing body fat. Do you happen to have a good resource on optimal body fat percentages, either by age or sex? Yeah, optimal body fat percentages for men between 13 and 15%. Optimal body fat percentages for women between 20 and 22%. So we're talking about body fat because most people have too much of it. The studies have shown that, you know, seven in 10 adults have way too much body fat. So that's why we're talking about body fat. Now, one in five children is obese, obese. Children didn't used to be obese, so we need to talk about body fat. But I hear you. You know, there are some people that are orthorexic and too lean, and that's a problem, okay? Friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. I'm going to go exercise myself. I uh, had a little yogurt, berries, and whey protein with collagen earlier. Uh, but very grateful that you're here. Thanks for hitting the like button. If you enjoyed this video, please share this with a friend. We are live every Monday evening. Very grateful that you're here. Again, hit that like button. That just lets me know we should do more of these videos. That tells the algorithm that people like you should see this stuff. So hit the like button. We have an awesome video coming to you tomorrow morning. More content later in the week. Again, have a great evening. If I didn't get to your question now, I save these chats. I will try to make uh, content with specific regards to your question uh, as well. Have an awesome day. Awesome start to your morning if you're in you know, the UK or uh, 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 Australia right now. And we will catch you all later. Um, really appreciate you. Have a good night. Bye now.